Kia ora, good evening. 30 years ago, it was a case that gripped the nation when Peter Ellis was found guilty of 16 charges of sexual abuse against children at the Christchurch Civic Crash. Now the Supreme Court has quashed his convictions, calling them a substantial miscarriage of justice. They were the words he'd waited his whole life to hear, but he died three years ago. Justice Wynne Kelman called it a long and painful journey. But some of the parents of the children involved have slammed the decision, saying the court has favoured a criminal over the victims. Alexa Cook has been following the ruling in court. We'll go to her live in just a moment. But first, her report. The Alice family walking into court one last time, a day they've waited decades for. I wish my brother was here, because um, it was really what he deserved. It's not... Not for us to hear so much. The Supreme Court quashing Peter Ellis's convictions, clearing his name. The release of this court's judgment marks the end of a long and painful journey through the courts. Admitting mistakes were made. That a substantial miscarriage of justice resulted from the expert evidence given at the appellant's trial. Words that lifted a 30-year wait from the Ellis family's shoulders. We're just so proud of them. <laughs> Proud of the person yours. Damn. Peter Ellis was convicted in 1993 on 16 child sex abuse charges. Three were later withdrawn. He spent seven years in jail and maintained his innocence until the day he died. Uh, he didn't give up and he didn't back down from who he is or who he was. And, um, and he fought. The Supreme Court found two key problems with the original trial. That psychiatrist Dr Zalis's evidence lacked balance, which may have affected the verdicts, and that some of the children's evidence was contaminated by direct questioning from their parents. The jury was not fairly informed of the level of risk. The case has been described as a witch hunt as the allegations against Peter were made during a time of hysteria about child sex abuse. But the court isn't placing blame. This court's judgment is not to be read as a criticism of the parents, the complainants or those involved in the investigation and trial. Some of those parents released a statement today saying they are shocked and saddened by the court's decision. They maintain the children suffered terrible abuse and they feel that the Supreme Court has favoured a convicted criminal and ignored the victims. The Supreme Court granted Alice's appeal only months before Peter died of bladder cancer in 2019. In a legal first, his case didn't die with him because his lawyers argued he deserved tikanga. We would not be here but for tikanga. This case allows the manner of Mr Alice to be restored uh, and that is, again, I think, groundbreaking. A groundbreaking case that the family said has returned Peter's mana. Well, Alexa joins us now. Kia ora, Alexa. Is this now the end of Alice's legal case? Well, in the courts, yes, but the question many people will have now is whether there should be some sort of compensation for Peter Ellis. But despite this case being a legal first, with Ellis having his convictions quashed after he died, the Justice Minister, Kitty Allen, said that Cabinet guidelines don't allow for compensation after a person's death and that she isn't considering looking into that at this stage, although she is open into looking at, into whether she needs to look at, at whether a reform is possible in future. However, though, she says that the family hasn't actually approached her on whether they might want compensation. From the Supreme Court in Wellington, Tenakwe Alexa.